basically trying to keep up with the Joneses, or in this generation, we're trying to keep up with the Kardashians, which they're ultra rich and they could like, they could afford to like give some of their money to stop like climate change and stuff, but that's a whole nother topic. Like Jeff Bezos could give up half of his money and like basically like fix all of the world's problems and still live comfortably, but he doesn't. But you know, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother situation we're gonna talk about later. Okay, moving on. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. My name is Ali and I talk about everything zero waste, low waste, eco-friendly, as long as it has something to do with saving the environment, I'm talking about it. Today we're gonna be talking about the struggles of ethical and sustainable fashion and how kind of right now there's no win-win situation and you honestly just have to try your best. So if you're interested in talking about the struggles of sustainable and ethical fashion, please keep on watching. All right, so if you're watching this, I'm gonna assume that you know that fast fashion is really unethical and really unsustainable. The reason that they're unethical is they basically use modern day slave labor and they don't pay their workers fair wages, especially the women and the children that they use to make these Zara Fashion Nova outfits. Women don't even get maternity leave. All of these factories, Fashion Nova, Zara, Forever 21, She and Romwe, all of the factories that produce their clothes are in developing countries and they pollute the waterways and the air. People who live in these developing countries rely on these waterways and these factories also reduce the air quality of these developing countries and of course now, because the air quality is so bad, it exasperates COVID. If your clothes are that cheap, you really need to wonder, how are they made? How are the people being treated? The people that make your clothes, how are they being treated? Like, what are their conditions? What fabrics are they using? We really need to start being mindful of these things and start being good, compassionate humans and thinking of others rather than how we look on Instagram. Fast fashion's model is basically a throwaway culture. How many times have you worn that she and romper? Maybe like twice, and then like you never touch it again, and then you donate it to the thrift store. That's throwaway culture. Compared to the 1980s, we're buying so much more clothes, but only wearing them about half the time that we would have worn them in the 80s. So busy thinking about what other people think of us on the gram, or how we look. We're basically trying to keep up with the Joneses, or in this generation, we're trying to keep up with the Kardashians, which they're ultra rich and they could like, they could afford to like give some of their money to stop like climate change and stuff, but that's a whole nother topic. Like Jeff Bezos could give up half of his money and like basically like fix all of the world's problems and still live comfortably, but he doesn't. But you know, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother situation we're gonna talk about later. Okay, moving on. Okay, so we all know thrifting is a better option than buying fast fashion. But is it really though? The answer is, it really depends. Thrifting is cheaper and it's better because you're not creating demand for new products and you're using what's already there. But there are some caveats to it. I just wanna to touch on that these white trendy influencers have made thrifting so cool when people of color and people from low income communities get made fun of for wearing secondhand clothes and now it's trendy to shop at Goodwill because these white girls are doing it. And speaking of these cool trendy kids shopping at thrift stores, Goodwill and thrift stores are starting to notice. So the prices are going up and people that rely on thrift stores to get new clothes can't afford that already. Like growing up poor, it was very like seldom that I was able to get new clothes at all. I personally don't do this and I fall into the very like skinny tiny category that's like a size small but these people that are the ideal size small go to thrift stores and buy things that are three sizes larger than them just to thrift flip them it's already really hard to find things in a thrift store if you're a size extra larger larger like why are you gonna buy things to make it harder for people to find clothes that are their size like there's plenty of size smalls in thrift stores. Being sustainable should be accessible to everybody. People that are causing these problems already have this privilege and they should be more mindful of that. But you know, not everyone has the same education. So that's why we're making this video. This is not to condemn anybody if you didn't know these things. And this is not to condemn you from like 
thrifting ever again. Like this is not to stop you because even if you do donate your clothes and even if you do thrift, a lot of the clothes don't get bought. And a lot of these clothes end up in developing countries and then they end up getting burned there because they don't have any more room for it. I personally learned this by watching the fast fashion episode in the Patriot Act with Hassan Minhaj and I really suggest that you go watch it because he gives way more stats and way more information than I can ever in this video. I just wanted to iterate some of the things that I thought were important. I thrifted this shirt off of Depop so if you really want to thrift, there's always places like ThreadUp there's always places like Depop, Poshmark, Craigslist, eBay. Yeah, so I suggest like thrifting your clothes still. Just be mindful of where you're shopping and how you're shopping. Now let's move on to ethical fashion. Point blank, ethical and sustainable fashion is very expensive. Like I myself am very weary of still spending like 50 bucks on a t-shirt. Not that I would. I don't think I'd ever spend 50 bucks on a t-shirt. I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I don't think so. Another problem that's in ethical and sustainable fashion is some of it isn't very size inclusive, or a lot of it isn't very size inclusive. And you really have to check if these people are greenwashing and the way that they source their fabrics and their materials. There's a lot that goes into thinking about sustainable and ethical fashion. Yeah, you really have to check these companies' values and how they sustainably source or ethically source their fabrics and you really have to check what the working conditions are like. If you wanted suggestions for ethical and sustainable fashion that is also size inclusive, may I suggest Eileen Fisher and Girlfriend Collective. Those are some of my favorite places to shop. I really haven't shopped at Eileen Fisher but I absolutely love Girlfriend Collective. Going back to the point that ethical and sustainable fashion is not very budget inclusive and it's very expensive. If you do have the privilege to shop ethically and sustainably and you have that kind of money, I really encourage you to do so and stop buying from fast fashion. So I first learned about fast fashion and how it's so detrimental. In senior year of high school, I read this article about that collapse of um, one of the fast fashion factories and I really like took time to not buy from Forever 21 or Zara or whatever. And then adding on to that, I watched The True Cost, which I really recommend that you watch if you haven't already. It's a really good documentary about fast fashion and like the impacts of fashion. I also recommend that you watch that fast fashion episode of Patriot Act with Hassan Minhaj. I like the way that he puts it and it makes it really digestible. So I recommend you watch that if you haven't. At this point, I felt really defeated. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do? I can't really afford ethical fashion. I thrift, but I don't want to like take away from low income communities. I don't shop fast fashion anymore. And I still have some fast fashion pieces in my wardrobe that I bought years ago. So what do I do? And I've come up with a few points that might help. Let's get started on that. So obviously my first point is going to be use what you already have in your closet. Find different ways to style them, take care of them, like really follow the directions on how to wash and care for them. Personally what I like to do to make everything easier is I wash everything in cold water because it doesn't compromise the fabric and also you don't use up extra energy to heat up the water when you wash your clothes because that's what uses up the most energy in the washer. So wash your clothes in cold water to maintain the fabric and to save a little energy and save yourself some money. I also recommend hang drying your clothes if you can. I recently just bought a drying rack. Again, like I mentioned, repeat outfits, find different ways to style them. Really think about like what you can do with your clothes. And if you really want to buy something new, try thrifting it first. And if you really, really have to buy something new and it really has to be fast fashion, think about the cost per wear and try to take care of that as much as possible. If you're gonna buy something ethical and sustainable from new, really think about the price and think about how much you're gonna wear that. It's a real, real, real big investment. So cost per wear is really essential. Like how much are you gonna wear that? Are you buying it only for a special occasion? If you're only buying it for a special occasion and you're only gonna wear it once, I suggest maybe renting it. 
There's this gray thing called Rent from the Runway, and you can probably do that if that's available to you. Ask friends and family if they have any clothes that you like that they don't want anymore. Hand me downs are seen as poor, but they're really not. They're really sustainable, and you give another piece of clothing new life. It's not necessarily new, but it's new to you. So, win win. <laughs> another tip is if you're gonna purge your closet, if you're gonna get rid of stuff before donating it straight to Goodwill, Think about maybe selling it on Depop, selling it on Poshmark, selling it on Facebook Marketplace. Or if you really just don't want to go through the hassle of selling your old clothes, donate it to a homeless shelter or a local women's shelter. They always need more donations from, from anybody, really. You can always post it up on your local Buy Nothing group and someone will be really happy to take it off your hands. Or try donating it to Big Brothers Big Sisters. Make sure that it goes to someone that's actually going to use it. Ask a friend if they want it. Ask a family member if they want it. You never know, a lot of people could find the things that you wear really cute and really want it once you're done. And again, I wanna say this point one more time. If you're gonna buy a fast fashion, really, really, really take care of it like it's the most sustainable, ethical clothing that you have. Okay guys, that's pretty much it for the video. If you wanna see more of my face and my eco-friendly tips, please subscribe down below and leave a comment and give it a like. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.